going to share a few of my tips and tricks, um, show a few of the things I've been creating lately, and maybe answer some questions if anybody has any. Actually, today is grocery shopping day, so I figured why not just make it a full kitchen day and do a little series or a little talk on some of the things I've been wanting to share. As some of you may or may not know, I started a blog, or excuse me, a uh, podcast series last year for Roots R Us, um, where I share health tips, herbal information, and what have you, a lot about plants and gardens, and I just got really busy at the end of the year. Our son turned 21, and he moved out, and it was hard. <laughs> So for a little while, I just stopped doing everything, just work, work, work. Um, and lately, I've been creating again. So, um, like I said, I just want to share some of the information that I have found to be very useful, helpful, or yummy, and easy to make. Um, so I guess I'll get started now. The first thing I wanted to talk about was the gummies <laughs> that I made. Everybody has been blowing up my inbox and asking me about the coconut gummies. Um, first of all, they will be for sale. I will have lots of different uh, gourmet flavors. Um, as you know, I like to be unique and I don't see a, hardly anything in the store that sounds good to me. Um, so I create what I want and I share it with you all if, if you're interested. Um, so I will be sharing the semi-recipe. <laughs> I can't give away all my tips on this one because I'm going to be selling them, but I can definitely give you just the, the basics because it's very simple. And hi Sarah, thanks for joining. Um, so yeah, so for the gummies, like I said, I'm going to give the basic recipe and really and truly everything I do starts from just a very very basic recipe and then I just get creative with it. I very rarely end up throwing out whatever it is because I make very tiny batches. Um, hey I love you too. Um, yeah so I make really tiny batches so I don't really waste anything and because I use a few ingredients it rarely turns out bad. <laughs> I mean, it might not be exactly what I intended on creating, but it's all good ingredients and it's good flavor. So either I will use it in another recipe and make something else out of it and recreate my co-creation, or I'll just eat it and say, okay, next time, you know, lessen the sweetener, increase the thickening, so on and so forth. Um, so for the gummies... The main ingredient, as you probably have guessed, is gelatin. <laughs> um, so there are several types of gelatin. There are several ways for you to get pectin. Um, pectin is what makes the fruit or liquid solidify and turn jiggly. Um, so you get that kind of jiggliness in jelly, right? So you could start with jelly as a base because it has a lot of pectin in it. You can add your own fruit that has a lot of pectin in it, and you wouldn't even need to add gelatin at all, possibly, if you made the right combination. Oh, hi, buddy. I love you. That's my son. Aww. <laughs> um, yeah, so depending on the combination of what you're using, you're going to have to modify the amount of gelatin you use. So there really is no set-in-stone recipe. I use liquid for the flavor. In, in the case of my coconut um, gummies, I use coconut milk. I use a little bit of sweetener. That could be anything. That could be honey, dates, uh, agave, uh, cane sugar. In my case, I did use cane sugar, um, organic raw. And then I use um, some of the, I, I mean, I didn't use, but I could have used some of these um, extracts that I make. So that was something else that I wanted to talk about, but and I will segue into that in just a minute. But basically, those are the three ingredients you need to make gummies. You need pectin, something that's going to solidify. There are lots of fruit that contain pectin. So you could just take fresh fruit, cut it up, such as apples, 
cut it up. Um, cranberries are really, really high in pectin. Hibiscus is really high in pectin. Um, so if you grow sorrel, um, like you've seen me posting, or if you know anyone that grows sorrel or, or hibiscus, um, then you can ask them for seeds, and the seeds contain a lot of pectin. So again, just do your research, and <laughs> I know, right, Sarah? <laughs> Um, hi Scott, how are you? Thanks for joining me. Um, yeah, so like I said, pectin, liquid, and sweetener. Those are the three ingredients. Then, of course, you can always get crazy, unique, and hey Irvin, how are you? Um, and then you can add your own unique ideas to it to make it really crazy like I do. Um, so again my segue into the extracts that I make I make actually this is a vanilla extract that I started on January 14th of 2014 that happens to be my son's birthday so in 2014 I created this vanilla extract however it didn't last for three years so what I do is I just buy the fresh organic uh, vanilla beans and vodka, organic vodka is my base for all of my extracts, whether it's an herbal extract or it's a flavor extract. You are, you're getting real old, Brendan. <laughs> um, scary, it's not, oh my god, this is like the best vanilla extract that you could ever, oh my goodness. So yeah. <laughs> vanilla extract homemade easy you just put you split the you don't even have to split the vanilla beans but it makes it a lot faster you split the vanilla beans put it in a bottle I save everything so this is like an old hot sauce bottle or something and you just shake it up every once in a while and in no time you'll have real organic fresh extract and you just keep topping it off with new vodka fresh vodka and fresh vanilla beans and it never goes away so that's my vanilla then I have a coconut that I started recently we'll see how that one goes so far I don't know <laughs> we have a cinnamon and look at the color of that this is just cinnamon bark that I've been marinating in the organic vodka this one you can't see too well because the choice of bottle was not this is a old jelly <laughs> but there are lime peels in here so that's a lime extract all you need to do this for the lime or for any fresh fruit is to use a zester a really good zester is like this is my one of my favorite kitchen tools um, so this is really really sharp it's two-sided. One side is a zester, and the other side does like little shreds. So, if you invest in that, I got it on Amazon. I'm not sure how much it was, but it wasn't too bad. Um, you can make a lot of extracts using the rinds from fruit. Um, I also have a lemon here. As you can see, the, the color is very bright. That's all the flavor. That's all the goodness. Now, what do I use my extracts in? <laughs> I, oh, I also have cardamom extract. This one is like, yeah, this one is our favorite. I use my extracts in teas to make like a chai tea. I use it in food. I use it in pretty much everything. My, my baking. Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing I don't use it in. Smoothies. Uh, just to add a little bit of kick, a little bit different flavor, and that's what makes things really stand out in your mouth is that you have a contrast of flavors. So, you know, sometimes I'll just pair something up that I wouldn't normally think goes together, but I'll pair it up, and like I said, a very small amount. And, <laughs> yes, yes, Scott. <laughs> and you never know, like, how crazy it's going to be. And then, you know, that's how, I, that's how I run into a lot of my creations, very honestly. Um, 
it's just I'm not afraid to, to try things. There's no fear in me. Um, it's either going to come out really good or I'm going to learn from it and I'll make something better the next time. So yeah, there goes your natural flavoring. Um, there's no reason you can't do it. It's super easy. It takes all of five minutes, if that. Uh, the longest part is that you're going to have to wait for the flavor to develop. Um, but really and truly, within about two weeks, you can start using it. If you're shaking it once a day, um, within two weeks, you can start using it, and you'll start to feed, taste the flavor. But it's going to take at least a month before you get a really potent flavor. Um, I generally leave mine in a little longer than a month because I like to push it. I like to get everything out of it that I possibly can. Um, and it's not going to go bad because it's being preserved in the vodka. Um, so the only tip that I need to make sure to share with you, if you try this at home, make sure, yeah, <laughs> the waiting part is hard, um, make sure that your vodka is covering, fully covering whatever you're going to be extracting, whether that's an herb or fruit or what have you. Um, make sure that it's fully covered so that it, mold or anything doesn't develop on top of it. Um, and yeah, that's it for for my extracts. But I use, like I said, I use it in everything. You um, would be surprised at how often cinnamon is used in meals, like food. Most people only use cinnamon for desserts, but depending on uh, you know what type of food you're eating, there's cinnamon in a lot of things. For instance, like curry. Who would knew that? Like you wouldn't know that unless you ever made your own curry from scratch, or you've known somebody, you've been around somebody um, who's done it before. So, yeah. <laughs> so let's see what else did I want to share? Oh, something else I wanted to share that was bugging me for a long time, and I did a lot of research on this, and finally one day just dawned on me. I personally never used to wash the bananas that I purchased from the store. I make sure they're organic, but I didn't wash them. Like, why do I need to wash my bananas? Because I'm not eating the peel. So I started to see fruit flies more often, and I have transitioned to using only one bag a day for my compost. So I knew it wasn't my compost causing the issue, but I couldn't figure out where these fruit flies were coming from. Long story short, fruit flies lay eggs on your bananas. Or could be like a squash, something you don't usually wash. But they lay the eggs on the store or at the warehouse and when they're in route, so on the truck, it's going to lay an egg. A fly could possibly lay an egg on your banana and then once the bananas start to ripen, that's what waken, awakens the fruit flies. They start to hatch, and then you have fruit flies everywhere. And it's so gross. <laughs> so, wash your bananas. Wash your squash. Wash everything that you get from the store. That was a tip, like I said. I just never thought to wash my bananas. But, you know, now I will. <laughs> Um, so let's see, what else? Did anybody have any questions? If not, I'm going to keep on rambling. Okay, so the other tip that I wanted to share is years ago, I made mozzarella cheese from scratch. And when I started to do that research, yes, wash the bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Wash them good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I start to do research on how to make cheese. What's, you know, what is cheese? What's the process? Because I really like to know about my food. Like, <laughs> thank you. Um, I really like to know, like, every detail about my food. And that's why I like to take it to the level of growing and creating everything from scratch. Um, but... When I started doing this research, I found that the only way I was going to be able to make uh, the mozzarella cheese is if I purchase raw milk. So I went through a process where I personally don't drink milk. It doesn't agree with me, and I don't like the way it tastes. So I went through a process of researching, finally found a place that sold the organic raw milk, 
So I finally got a chance to make mozzarella. Well, fast forward to like a week ago, I decided uh, we were going to make um, raviolis for James's mother's birthday. Uh, that was a gift we were going to make. And I didn't want to buy the ricotta cheese. It's really hard to find around here and it's expensive. So I said, you know what, I'm going to make my own ricotta cheese. I kind of forgot that you really aren't supposed to use organic pasteurized milk and that's because the pasteurization is basically killing a lot of the good stuff and apparently your milk isn't supposed to curdle because it doesn't have enough of the, the, the balance that it needs as far as when you add acid to your heated milk it's supposed to curdle. But because of the pasteurization process um, it doesn't curdle. So I, like I said, I'm, I don't believe that things can't be done until I do it myself. I'm just bullheaded. So I just had to prove it to myself, I guess. I bought the milk, I bought the cream, organic, both, and I began to make it. I put three tablespoons of lemon juice in there, like they said, and I'm stirring, and it says basically after two minutes, your milk should start to curdle. After about four minutes, I realized, I guess they're right. <laughs> and then I said, no, they're not right. There has to be a better way. So I thought about it for just a second, and I'm re remembering that the um, catalyst, what's going to actually cause the milk to turn into cheese or separate, is the acid, the level of acid. So I make kombucha. And recently, we haven't been drinking. We haven't really been drinking the kombucha too much. Um, so I have this half a gallon container full of kombucha. And it's really, really, really strong at this point. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try kombucha. And do you know what? This is what did it. When I put, and I put like a, approximately a quarter cup, a little over, between a quarter cup and a half a cup. I didn't measure fully because at this point the, the, the recipe is not working so I'm just going off of sheer will. Like I want this to work and it's gonna work. So um, kombucha, is, is that what you mean Francine? If so, it's K-O-M-B-U, thank you Bonfire. Hi! She typed it for me below, Francine. Yeah, it's, it's, um, basically it's a health drink. It's a probiotic. It has lots of beneficial bacteria that's good for your gut, your intestinal health. So, um, it's really, really beneficial as far as, um, strengthening your immune system. And it can be purchased in the store and that's how I started drinking it, but then we started drinking it so often that it got to be ridiculous as far as the price, so I started making my own. And generally, that's what I do. When I'm consuming a lot of something, um, I usually try to figure out how to make it myself. Um, so yeah, it's really vinegary once it gets to this point, but it kind of has a sour flavor, and... Yes, I have made my own yogurt. I've made coconut yogurt and I've made regular yogurt. Um, but I didn't use kombucha. I use probiotic. Um, the probiotic tablets that you can purchase in the store. Um, but I know that you can use kombucha. I just haven't gotten to that point yet as far as time. Um, but yeah, so it was like mind-blowing to me <laughs> that kombucha is what pushed it over the edge and made it work. Um, but even better than that, when they tell us we can't do it, and we find a way to do it anyways, that to me is just like, I can't, I have no words for it. So, that was like a really big one, because I saw, I researched everywhere, and everybody, cooks, chefs, everybody is saying, it can't be done unless you have raw milk. If you use organic pasteurized milk, it won't work. And you do need to use organic milk, I believe, because of the fat content. Um, but I'd love for somebody to try it and let me know. Um, but yeah, so that, again, like that was just like huge to me. Um, ricotta cheese 
it turned out so good. We have a little bit left. Um, let me see. We mixed it with spinach, um, garlic, mozzarella cheese. And this is what it looks like. This is some of the rest of it. And it made so much more than what I purchased in the store. Like, it said it was only going to make a pint. And it made, like, a pint and almost two pints from, uh, what was it, a quart of milk and a cup of cream. So, way more expensive, <laughs> way more better. Like, it, it just ridiculous. Okay, so then I also found out that, because I said, okay, so I made uh, ricotta cheese, now I have to make cream cheese. It can't be too much different, right? Well, it's not. <laughs> uh, it's not. Um, hi, Sh Shara. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, no, I made, I made a lot of different things. I first was talking about uh, the kombucha that I make. And then I was talking about the ricotta cheese that I recently made. So um, those are two different things. You don't like it? Yeah, some people like it and some people don't. Like, I'm a vinegar person. I love vinegar. So it's not too vinegary for me. And it really depends on the flavor, too. Because, like, a ginger is going to ferment way faster. And it's going to have a more gingery flavor, or excuse me, a sour flavor than, like, the hibiscus. Or... I'm trying to think of what the other one is that I get. Passionberry? I haven't... I don't buy them too often since I make it. Um, but yeah, I love the kombucha also. So I have a lot of scobies also. So if anybody's interested in making their own kombucha, I sell the scoby kits. Um, the scoby is... Scoby is an acronym and it stands for Symbiotic Culture something. I forget exactly. But basically, it's the yeast. And it's a natural yeast. It's a good yeast. There are good yeasts and bad yeasts. And it's a good one. It is what processes the tea, because that's what you start. Kombucha is basically a sweet tea base that ferments and turns into a health drink because of the fermentation process. So, um... Yeah, so you can use these, these scobies to reproduce. They just keep growing and getting bigger. Um, so after a while, you kind of have to take them out and either do something with them. There's lots of things you can do um, with scobies. There's face masks. There's, like, people, some people will um, make, like, jerky out of it and give it to their animals. Um, oh, yeah. Well, take some kombucha and mix it with your favorite juice. Because you'll still get the benefits of it, even if you don't, um, hey Danilo, yeah, even if you don't drink it straight, you'll still get the benefits of it. So just, you know, mix your favorite juice in there. That's what it is, Shara, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's, um, what is the word, diluted, as long as your body's receiving it. I mean, if you can drink the whole thing in a day, that's going to be more beneficial. But if you have to split it up between an ounce at a time mixed with, you know, seven ounces of something else, that's cool. Um, I had a list of things that I was going to talk about, and I know I'm forgetting them, so I'm trying to find them. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, something else that's really, really cool. Um, oh, you're welcome. Something else that is, I'm a coffee drinker, and I know a lot of people who are health people, herbalists or into health, they will say stay away from coffee. I don't, I don't stay away from anything unless my body tells me to stay away from it, so that's the only thing, person, entity, being that I listen to. I'm in touch with the feelings of my body, so I just let my body and my mind guide me. It's gotten me this far, and I'm, I'm cool so far. I'm very healthy, so I just keep following that. Um, but yeah, so again, I drink coffee, and I love it. I try not to drink it that much because it really, everything's about balance, so I don't want too much. However, the main reason 
I believe that a lot of people say to stay away from coffee is because coffee's acidic, very acidic. Excuse me. Um, so I decided that I was going to make it less acidic <laughs> so that it's better for me. So by simply adding just a few drops of Himalayan sea salt to your coffee, either when you're making it in the, if you use a um, coffee pot, which I don't, but if you use a coffee pot, you can just put it in the filter part, or if you are just going to, like if you're out somewhere and you're getting coffee, you can just put a couple pinches, and just a few grains of salt is all you need. But you will taste the flavor of the coffee so much more, just like anything. You, you taste the flavors when there's salt in there. If there's no salt, it doesn't taste so good, right? So just a little tiny bit totally changes the flavor and the level of acidity. And you can test it if you have pH paper, because I've done that. Um, so yeah, I thought that that would be a great tip for coffee drinkers like myself who are either trying to kick the habit or just trying to um, lessen, you know, drinking. You can start with lowering the acidity as part of weaning yourself off of it or, like I said, just changing the frequency that you drink it. Um, also, then, another issue with coffee is the amount of sugar that you add to it. So, if you don't drink a lot of, if you don't add a lot of sugar to it, then it's not as bad as if you add a lot of sugar. Um, so, yeah. Just add a little bit of salt and just let me know. <laughs> let me know what you think. Um, baking soda is something else you could use because they are, you know, very, very similar as far as the sodium level. So you could use baking soda if you didn't have salt. Just use a lot less of the baking soda because it's way more potent. Um, so let's see. Something else I wanted to share is somebody asked me, like I make a lot of stuff with Irish moss, and someone asked me, how do I, how can I stand uh, the flavor? Chaffee? No. Is that with uh, mushrooms? Or chocolate? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let, let me know what chaffee is. Oh, cacao. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh yes, I've tried cacao, I've put coconut in there, I've put uh, carob, I use a lot of carob. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I mix it up. Like I said, I, I try to balance myself out in every way um, that I possibly can. And yes, I love, I, I even like cocoa tea. Um, a friend, Irvin, I don't know if he's still on here, but he hit me to cocoa tea last year and oh lord I I am in love with it um, I've been buying the cacao nibs because I haven't been able to get the fresh beans um, but the cacao nibs work just the same you just have to um, powder it up a little bit more so that it breaks up it will, you know, ex it will uh, extract a lot faster when they're not huge pieces. I haven't tried that. Yeah, I don't, I usually, um, whenever I usually try something, I usually try it at home first. I usually try to make it myself because I'm a very picky, if you guys haven't figured that out, <laughs> that's where my co-creations came from. It came from my pickiness. Like, I'm just like one of the pickiest people. I'm very specific about my food, about things in general. So, um, I, you know, I've always been the type of person that would say, oh, can I get that, but can I get this with it and take that off of it and add a little bit of this to it? So I always would create my own meal wherever I would go. And, you know, it kind of started like that in, in the grocery store. I'd buy stuff like products and I'd bring it home and I'd add my own a little bit more oil to it or some essential oils because I didn't like theirs so I'd get the unscented kind and um hi Joyce I love you too good to see you thanks for joining me just running my mouth a little bit today <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so I was just sharing some tips about the kitchen, some of the adventures that I have creating and how I am able to do that. Um, some of my, like I was sharing earlier, some of my um, favorite kitchen gadgets is one, this peeler, zester, slash shredder. It's extremely sharp and it works really, really good. Um, one of the things that I do with it is I harvested this beautiful, nice piece of aloe a little while ago. And when I'm going to use aloe in my hair or um, on my face, it takes a long time to get the aloe, to harvest the aloe and to extract the gel. So, um, what I have figured out to do is use this tool, this zester tool. So the side that zests, it only takes a very small peel off when you're zesting and it does the same thing to the aloe. It just takes that top layer off. So then you're just left with the gel. So that was a time saver that I just, like I said, I had to share. Um, hey, <laughs> um, let's see. And then the other kitchen gadgets that are my absolute favorites are, I couldn't do very much without this, uh, I don't know if you can see it. There's too much light in my kitchen, but it's my KitchenAid mixer. I love this thing. I've had it for years, and yes, it cost a little bit of money, but it was a great investment. Um, it saves, like I said, it saves me a lot of time because I do make a lot of doughs for scratch. Um, what tool is that? I know I said a lot. <laughs> oh, oh, the zester? I'll put a link up. Um, yeah, I got it on Amazon. I'll put a link up to where I got it on Amazon because I don't know the exact name of it, but I've tried other ones in the past and they were not as quality as this one. Um, so yeah, I, I gave them a really good review. <laughs> the other favorite tool of mine is this baby. I've learned the hard way that you must invest in quality products, in quality ingredients, in quality people, in quality things. Because if you don't, they give you a hard time. They make your life really hard. And when you're in the middle of cooking up something really good and really yummy, it just stops working. So those two um, kitchen items help me a great deal. You're glad you can help. <laughs> you didn't teach me anything. No, I, you taught me how to be a very good mommy. Thank you for doing that. Because you were my only chance, and that, that's not going to happen again. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to do is just come on and share a little. I said I was going to start doing more lives, and... This is the first one. So, does anybody have any questions? I've thought about doing a live walkthrough in the grocery store um, to help people figure out what to buy, what not to buy, or why not to buy it. Um, let me know if that would be helpful. I'm not sure, because I know that everybody doesn't have access to everything, so that's a good idea. Okay. Um, and there's one other thing that I just remembered that I wanted to share with you. Um, do you see all of these containers? Bags? This is a bag of the cacao nibs. This is organic cornmeal. This is blue masa corn flour. This is how I purchase my food. I purchase pretty much everything in bulk. 
and I have it in containers. Because I purchase it in bulk, I get it really, really cheap. So, I mean, I can't explain, like, how much cheaper that things are when you buy it in bulk. Um, for instance, this is organic black quinoa. The price on it is five thirty-seven. This was full. It's a how much is it? One and a half, a little over one and a half pounds. For five dollars and thirty-seven cents. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to show, like, like I was saying, I was thinking that it would be interesting to show how I am able to eat all organic, natural, non-GMO, and not spend more than $100, $120 at the grocery store when I go shopping. That's a lot. And that $120 lasts us probably like two weeks, a week and a half, depending on how much I'm cooking. Um, sometimes I go crazy, as you guys know, and I'm cooking everything, and I just want to make everything. Um, do I use it all? Um, as far as the food that I purchase? Is that what you mean, Dabanga? Hi, by the way. I mean, I try to share. some. I used to buy my flour because I, I make so much that I would buy 25-pound bags of flour. And doing it that way, I would spend $25 for a 25-pound bag of spelt organic flour. And I would sell it to friends or family. Whoever needed some, I would sell it to them at a cheaper price. Um, so, yeah, when I buy in huge bulk like that, I do share, if that's what you meant. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I know that everybody isn't always able, like I'm not always able to purchase in bulk in a large quantity. Um, but when I can, I know that I'm saving a lot and I definitely want to share that with everyone that I can. Um, yeah, people think it's so expensive to eat healthy and it's not. I'm telling you, like I'm not rolling in the dough. Everybody thinks, might think so, but I'm not. And it's just knowing that you can do so many things with just a few ingredients, how to recreate things, um, like swapping out beans for meat, for instance. I am a meat eater, but I don't eat that much meat. And financially, meat is going to cost you a lot more, and it's not as beneficial as eating beans. So if you learn how to replace beans in a lot of your meals you wouldn't even know you people don't even know that they're missing meat when they're eating some of the things that I make um, yeah people don't know where they only know Whole Foods yeah and I don't shop at Whole Foods like I'm anti Whole Foods ask my son he's on here somewhere <laughs> I go in Whole Foods maybe once a year maybe and when I'm in I'm mad I don't like Whole Foods I shop at the small stores. There's actually um, the natural grocery store that I shop at the most is right up the street. And I've been living, I've lived in this area for over 10 years now. So I know them. I'm very familiar with them. If I ask for anything, they'll carry it. If I, you know, make a request or tell them, like, you need to, I need to see seeded, um, seeded I need seeds in my grapes. Yeah, whole salary exactly, um, and most of the, and the organic stuff is right next to the pesticide stuff. So you're telling me some of the pesticides didn't get on my organic? Like, I mean that just doesn't even make sense. Um, not that we can be a hundred percent sure in any case, but I don't want to pay top dollar when I can see it's sitting right next to poison. No, not for me. And I don't get tricked that easily. It's the same thing at that point. Um, but yeah, so definitely I'll, I'll um, do that. I'll plan something and I'll let you all know in the future. Um, like I said, I had thought about it for a while, but I wasn't sure how beneficial it would be. Um, I have seen other people do it before, but I don't, I really don't think most people go as deep as I do. 
And I mean that from a, because I'm a really picky, super friggin' picky person to the point where I even aggravate myself sometimes. Because that level of detail, because of that level of detail that I have, I tend to go beyond what most people, where most people stop. Um, so that's why I, you know, have so much information and I'm always uncovering and learning new things because I'm never satisfied with that's the end. There's always more. There's always more for us to learn. Um, we'll, we'll never know 100% of anything. So knowing that, I keep striving to know more. Uh, the more that we know, the better that we can take care of ourselves, our friends, and our family. Um, I really do believe that with all my heart, and I've seen it happen in my life. Um, so, honestly, like, there's been so many people around us that have, that are doing better because they're starting to see that we're not crazy. Um, we, we're really aware of what's going on and, and it's scary to open your eyes to see that what we've been told all of our lives isn't true it is very scary and it's hard to face that, that light um, but for me I'd rather be aware of the truth no matter how horrible dirty it is I'd rather be aware like I said so that I can do the best that I can to protect myself whether that comes down to my food um, whatever it is that I bring into my home, my clothing, whatever it is. And that's why when I share with you all, I'm sharing the same level that I do for myself and my family. And anybody that knows me personally will tell you that. They'll tell you, yep, she's just as crazy as she is about herself when it comes to other people. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to share, and I'm glad that there are people out there that want to hear it because... In the beginning of my ramblings, people didn't want to hear me. People just thought I was crazy and I was focusing on the negative, which is totally opposite. Um, but yeah, so that's all. I'm about to head out to grocery shopping and um, fill up my refrigerator since I've been cooking a lot and everything's gone now. <laughs> but thank you all so much. Um, any other questions? I will post the link, Karen, um, probably this evening when I get back, I'll post the link for the um, peeler. But yeah, I would say definitely. Uh, thanks, buddy. Um, yeah, definitely get a zester and start making some extracts because that's the simplest, fastest, easiest way that you can start incorporating good, healthy flavors without poison into your food. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a good one, everyone.